Hi, welcome back to the 7 Minute Culture Clinic. This week we welcome Rob Bartz, assistant coach for the number three ranked University of Portland women's soccer team. A few key elements that, that I look at when I'm trying to develop a good culture within our team is um, team chemistry. Uh, right off the bat I feel that if everyone's on the same page working at the same goal it's a lot simpler to, you know, when things aren't going well, to battle around or get around each other and really kind of pick it back up again and, and uh, create that team culture that wins games. You know, at the end of the day, we're all trying to compete to win games, yet at the same time, we, t we focus so much on the winning side as opposed to developing that team culture that ultimately is going to create wins. Um, and that's how I you know, strongly feel on the, on the chem team chemistry side. I think the other side is is leadership within, you know, the coach has to set that leadership. Mm -hmm. If we don't set a leadership right off the bat and give direction to our players, they're never going to find it. You know, I think we tend to, as coaches, say, well, I told them that or I said that. And the more I hear coaches say I said that, well, hang on a second, do they understand what you are trying to accomplish? And, and making sure that everyone's on that same page. And it's got to be what your standards are. You know, I think that um, we don't have rules, mm -hmm. so to speak, with our with either team, um, but we certainly have guidelines and traditions that our upperclassmen teach our underclassmen. Are there times when we have to step in and give them a better direction again? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, but I think that what Garrett does so well is he, he makes everyone understand what their role is and what their part is, and as new players come in, they understand that tradition and just follow into suit. The more you do here in the front end, the less you're going to you know, have to do in the back end. And we're just, I think that those two key elements, you know, developing that team chemistry and giving direction to get to that team chemistry are the, are the two keys for us here at University of Portland and what make us very successful. He's just continued all the small things. And again, making sure that shirts are tucked in, shoes are clean, you're on time, you're, you know, if you're, if you're on time, you're late. If you're 10 minutes early, you're on time. You know, that type of, we keep adding those little things in. And, you know, I think that's the strongest thing that's occurred on their girls' side. If you said, what's the tradition of University of Portland soccer, do the freshmen know the answer to that? If they don't know the answer to that, then our team culture is not there. And if you ask a, a, a freshman on the girls' side, they'll talk for 20 minutes. And what would they say, Rob? They would, I mean, absolutely, without question, they would say that we are you know, one of the most competitive groups around that is a close-knit, you know, we don't think that they all have to be best friends, but when it comes to playing on the field and it comes to, you know, getting in the trenches, they will, they will live and die for each other. Specifically, it's all the little things that we ask from them of being on time, of, of what it means to be a University of Portland women's soccer player, the commitment level that it's going to take. You know, I think a lot of people don't understand right off the bat, what, the, the, what we're really truly asking, we're, we're asking them to give four years of their lives a full commitment to one ideal, and that's you know, winning a national championship. I think it's a combination of all those little things of, you know, grades. What are you doing with your schoolwork? I mean, understanding that our women's soccer team, we want a, we want a cum average of 3.5 or better. Hands down. That's you got to understand that. So when you come in here, if you are normally a 3-4 student, we need you to get to a 3-6. We need you to get to a 3-7 to help. You know, that one freshman that comes in, doesn't understand what it's really taken, and messes up. You mentioned earlier about roles and understanding and being key, because obviously, very high-level program, you're going to recruit high-level players. Not everybody's going to get playing time. And that can be a real killer of culture. So Absolutely. how does that process unfold? Oh, wow, that is a phenomenal question. That is several meetings in the office, several closed doors, several tiers, several... Um, you know, the, the biggest thing I think that Garrett has done another great job of is taking that player that was a star. I mean, they're all stars. These players mm -hmm. are coming from a program, you know, their club soccer or their high school team, that they were the star. And now they're coming into a group where they are a freshman and just trying to get in the lineup. And when we have, you know, five or six national team players at any given time, that's a tough lineup to get into, mm -hmm. you know. And um, it's tough for, you know, I look at the junior 
that's working hard to get in the lineup and a freshman comes in that's a national team player. It's their position. And they're looking at it going, hang on a second, am I going to play again? And what, uh, what Garrett's done a very good job of is, is not making them be afraid of that challenge, of making them step up to that challenge and say, here's the thing. I'm not going to tell you that you're going to play over that national team player. I'm not going to tell you that the national team player is going to play over you. What I'm going to say is this is a healthy competition. And what you do with this is going to determine a lot of things that you're, you know, in your life. It's going to determine whether you're going to run from challenges, whether you're going to meet them head on, you know, are you going to just work harder in practice to make sure that you have that opportunity. You know, maybe it's a situation where I am a center midfielder and now, you know what? I'm willing to play right back because I want the team to win. And if that's going to help the team win, I'll play wherever you need me to. How competitive are your practices? Ooh. Yeah. Um, you want to bring this little camera to practice. <laughs> <laughs> it is. Our, our practices are, are, I mean, are, it's game. We've always said you have to practice like you're going to play in the game. You cannot, you know, I've, I've had coaches that, that will practice and uh, we're not going to, we don't want any contact here. Well, to, there's a big problem there because you can't take that training session and now go into a game and compete. We need you to compete at all times. We're not, we're not saying should you go wipe someone out and kill them, but if there's a tackle to be made, you will make it. And, and it's, I mean, there's, I mean, we've gotten very good at players understanding that it's not personal. There's never anything personal involved. If you get tackled, if you get kicked, if someone says something, the session is as heated as, as it is, you will constantly see sportsmanship all over the field, where it's, you know, someone made a blunder and there'll be someone else in the field saying, you know, let it go, get back in here, you know, boom, back into the session. And then afterwards, you'll see them two walk into the water, you know, coolers, arm in arm going, hey, you know, I know this is what happened. This is what we got to do. Let's move on. Top three things you would say to coaches across the country if you want to build a strong winning culture on and off the field. The biggest one right off the bat would be um, how well he learned from his mistakes and things that he did and how he moved forward with those. Um, the, the second one, the element for Clive, was just his amazing personability with people. He understood that in a team culture, you have, you have 20 different mentalities, attitudes, personalities, and he was so good at bringing them together. He knew what made this person tick. He knew what made this person. Obviously, when he was on the field, he was competitive. He was fierce. He was right after it. But when it ended, it was the hugs and kisses. And, and uh, so, you know, he had a lot of compassion. I guess the word mm. compassion for everybody, for the game, for, for people he coached.